Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, even Mario. Everywhere you look these days, you'll find a throwback to gaming 20 years ago. The upcoming CTR and Link's Awakening remasters. It's fun to be excited by something that is both new and familiar. Resident Evil 2 is a terrific example of this. This modern remake takes the essence of the original but updates it to an amazing degree. But not every remake improves on the original. Did you know that there were two Resident Evil 2 remakes prior to this? And both came out in the 90s? Well get ready to take a giant gulp of nostalgia as we go back in time to check out these first Resident Evil 2 remakes. The first remake is this cartridge for the Tiger game Com. Tiger Electronics, perhaps best known as a prodigious publisher of simple LCD games, tried to expand their brand with the release of the game Com. Through their trusted status as a frequent licensee, they were able to obtain several licenses from many third parties for release on their handheld. Resident Evil 2 came out the same year as the PlayStation original. Let's take a closer look. Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2 for the Tiger Game Com is a stripped down approximation of the original PlayStation release. This adventure tells Leon's story only as he arrives at a zombie infested Raccoon City on what was supposed to be his first day as a new RPD recruit. Similar to the original, most of your time in this game is spent exploring and searching for items and shooting or avoiding zombies and other infected creations. Did you find the moody music of the original too spooky? Fear not as all music has been stripped from this version. The sound effects are highly compressed but easy to recognize. The black and white graphics are surprisingly detailed with large characters. Like other GameCom games, this makes for impressive screenshots, but seeing the game's poor frame rate tells a different story. Leon's movement is limited to the four cardinal directions, but the designer still opted for tank controls. Basically each screen has three horizontal planes that you can move between 2.5D style. You can use the run button, but it only works horizontally and at full health. Between the stiff control and the shambling frame rate, you'll wonder if Leon is already infected with the T-Virus. Your lack of agility makes confrontations hard to avoid. I think they realize this because within the first four minutes you can collect over a hundred bullets. The enemies follow the same movement restrictions as you. This leads to occasions where they will line up single file for extermination, Plants vs. Zombies style. The fixed camera that the early RE games is famous for is present. As you transition from one screen to the next, you'll never know if you're going to be ambushed. The path to the police station is relatively linear, but once you reach RPD HQ, each screen can have multiple transition points. The rapid screen transitions and low detailed backgrounds can make later progress very disorienting. Be sure to use the map. This game tries to be faithful in spirit to the original. As well as its map, its inventory screen, item boxes, and save feature are very familiar. Later game encounters include zombie dogs, giant tarantulas, liquors, one enormous gator, and a mutated William Birkin. To see more of the game, check out Dead Hunter Speedrun. Resident Evil 2 for the game com is in most ways competent, but ultimately there are better ways to play RE2 on the go. The original release is available on the PSP or PS Vita, or with remote play you can even stream the new remake from your PS4 to your Vita or phone. To their credit, they tried more than others would have, but ambitions can't overcome such limited hardware. But this wasn't the only Resident Evil 2 from Tiger Electronics. This is a Resident Evil 2 99X system. It's one of several 99X games to be released, but this is the only one I have. It's similar, in size and design, to a Dreamcast VMU. Its dot matrix display is even binary, lacking any shade gradations. While the game com port gave a somewhat watered down version of the original, this dilutes the game even further. You begin once again as Leon equipped with a pistol. You are in some sort of structure, presumably the police station, though with so little detail in the backgrounds it's difficult to tell. This is due to this screen's much lower resolution. This is another music free affair, but the sampled sound effects sound fine. 
the entire game takes place in linear corridors. You still have access to an inventory screen and a map which shows how labyrinthine the current floor plan is. You'll need to keep an eye on your inventory screen because you have to manually reload your weapons here. Your goal is to scour the complex collecting ammo, new weapons, and the keys that you'll need to exit. Along the way, expect plenty of zombies and the occasional liquor. The final boss of level 2 is a giant tarantula. That's right, this game is level based. When you reach the exit of the current level, you'll be given a password and then you'll start on the next. Leon is still restricted to only moving in four directions, but this time there are no tank controls. You move directly with the cross pad. This is just about the only bright spot this game has to offer though. The refresh rate is once again abysmally slow, and this time there is no run button. The gameplay itself isn't too difficult, but it's simple and mundane. In playing for this review, the first level took around 20 minutes to complete. The second took nearly 15, but several minutes of that was simply backtracking through already cleared rooms to progress. I'm not sure what else to say about the gameplay. If you like the simple LCD games that Tiger is known for, or VMU mini games, this is very much like one of those, but with slightly more depth. It's simple and slightly fun if you have a high tolerance for tedium. An interesting feature of the 99X games is the two-player link. Two of these systems can be attached to each other, once again VMU style, or with the included link cable instead. Unfortunately, I have no idea how this game would work with two players. I don't know if you would fight or cooperate or simply compete for a high score. The only other Tiger system I have that uses this cable is this Giga Fighter. This is essentially a Mortal Kombat trilogy themed Tamagotchi or virtual pet. That's a sentence I never could have predicted, I'd say. You raise up a Mortal Combatant, and then you can link up and have them fight with your friends, presumably to the death? Yeah, the 90s were a weird time. The idea for this episode was sparked by Russ Lyman's Pass or Play series. I wanted to do a video with him for a while, so I looked through my collection to find a unique game to spotlight. Our video is up on his channel right now, go check it out. He's a really talented guy and I'm lucky to be featured on his channel. His channel is full of retro gaming goodness including DIYs, so if you like what I do, you might find something to like there as well. Tell him I said hi.